Um, to answer your question, uh, it's a great question about uh, anti-slavery. I mean, actually, a caller last week or the week before, I forget which week exactly, who was, you, who was a Bernie or Buster, which I believe, um, Sam, you went on a uh, five-minute rage after you hung up on him. It happens. Because uh, uh, he was a bit dumb. Um, and uh, he uh, made that argument about um, would you vote for an abolitionist or would you vote for an anti uh, – for, for pro-slavery? And this is what you were getting at. Um, abolitionism was a fringe movement in 1860. Uh, anti-slavery basically means that you're opposed to slavery for one of a number of reasons, usually because slavery meant the convergence of political power into the pro-slavery oligarchy. Um, and uh, this was slowly morphing into uh, a, a kind of a revocation of the democratic principle. It's very similar to, say, Bernard Balin's uh, theories about the loss of English liberty causing the American Revolution. Um, and there's this general fear that as uh, slavery spreads into the Western territories, uh, pro-slavery states will outnumber uh, uh, free states, and pro-slavery uh, individual uh, groups will continue to be overrepresented and have all the power in those states, and as a result, you'll have a pro-slavery oligarchy controlling the U.S. So people who are anti-slavery are usually anti-extensionists. They won't destroy slavery where it exists because they believe legally they can't or morally they shouldn't, or they want slavery to remain as a uh, system of demographic population control or um, domestic colonization. Um, but they won't see slavery extend beyond the western border. So beyond, in this case, um, into to Kansas, uh, beyond um, the original fault lines of the Missouri Compromise. And Abraham Lincoln is one of these people, and the repeal of the Missouri Compromise is what causes this frufra. Uh, abolitionists are immediatists. They want absolute destruction of slavery immediately. Right now, one day more of slavery is worse than 100 years of civil war. And then beyond abolitionists, you have egalitarians like William Lloyd Garrison, and they're even more marginal. You might have an abolitionist who thinks slavery is wrong, must be destroyed, but doesn't actually want black people to be equal to white people, just thinks that slavery is wrong. So you have all these three groups, and they all kind of converge in the Republican Party to create this anti-extensionist movement. But it's not an abolitionist party to late in 64. So, uh, and of course, late in 64, where Lincoln... So let me summarize what you're saying, is that uh, Clinton, I mean, Clinton, uh, that uh, Lincoln, in this instance, was the uh, most compromised... Uh, if you were someone who felt like uh, we should have an egalitarian society uh, relative to uh, the institution of slavery, um, you know, that Lincoln was practically triangulating at that point. Yeah, um, exactly. Uh, and, and Lincoln's views are he didn't like slavery personally, but he doesn't see how it can be destroyed. And he had two kind of fundamental points on it. One, legally, it can't be destroyed without a constitutional amendment, and that's not going to happen without two-thirds ratification of the states, and that's not going to happen with, you know, 15 slave states. Um, and uh, he also said um, famously in the, the – he does a lot of things in his debates with Douglas, um, usually quoted out of context. But one thing he says is – and I'm paraphrasing uh, – I cannot uh, castigate Southerners for not having a solution to a problem which I myself cannot solve. Basically, I don't know – if we destroy slavery, I don't know what happens tomorrow. So even though I'd like to see it go, I don't know how to compensate for it. We have four millions of people who most of them have had nothing beyond uh, human capital. Um, we don't know what to do with them. We don't know uh, how to treat them fairly. He admits that we'd either have to free them, make them equal, and most America would never accept that, or keep them slaves, because freeing them and not making them equal would be almost as cruel as slavery. Right. So his conclusion is, I have no idea what to do. Um, so it's, it's, it's a mess. What's interesting is you actually have a Bernie or Bust kind of movement at this period because you have the Garrisonian Commanderists, which your caller reminded me of, actually, um, because uh, they basically say, look, the whole system is based on slavery. The Constitution is pro-slavery. Therefore, the whole Constitution is evil. Everything that comes out of the Constitution is evil. So forget the Constitution. Forget the democratic system. We're just going to practice moral suasion, and we're not going to participate. We're not going to vote. We're not going to advocate for candidates. And it... It makes sense from an emotional standpoint, but logically, it probably accomplished nothing. Right. And even Garrisonian scholars, they usually state, you know, honestly, it's, it's kind of useless. And that's kind of your burn or your bust of the 1860s. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, send me an email if you uh, want to do a podcast. I think we could work on something like that. Oh, seriously? I'd, I'd love yeah. to. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Uh, that's a really a great call. I appreciate it. Send me an email, Majority Thank you. Reporters I at gmail.com. I love your show. All right. Bye bye. Hello, you. I'm Sam Cedar. Looking for smart, progressive talk that is occasionally amusing? Well, subscribe to our YouTube feed. Subscribe to our podcast. Like us on Facebook. And just generally 
Enjoy us.